Mr. Justice Bell had decided to leave the most crucial question of all until the very end of the trial. Whether Helen Steele and Dave Morris could in fact be held in any way responsible for the publication and distribution of the What's Wrong with McDonald's leaflet. As the trial began to build to a bitter climax, Mr. Rampton wanted Mr. Justice Bell to take into account a separate London Greenpeace publication, which set out the background and aims of the group. This is something I read out to you in opening. Um, I'm on the second page, under the heading Campaigning. Yes, I see. Perhaps the most successful campaign we have initiated in recent years has been the one against the McDonald's Hamburger Corporation. This has become a nationwide and worldwide movement, uniting many disparate campaigners in the aim of smashing a multinational that epitomizes everything we despise, a junk culture, the deadly banality of capitalism. The same leaflet describes London Greenpeace as an anarchist group and was to figure prominently when Paul Preston was cross-examined by Helen Steele about why McDonald's decided to take legal action. It says in that document, we are going to smash McDonald's. This is a primary objective. In there is a statement about alignment with animal liberation and at the same time in the British company we had four or five bombing incidents. You read the leaflet, that's it, is it? I discussed with Sid Nicholson the need to attend these public meetings you spoke of in your documents. I told him people should be attending these meetings. And whatever these people do, whatever they can find out, should be conducted in a proper, legal, constructive manner. But I fully intended to stop further publication of this document. When Sid Nicholson gave evidence, he claimed that he, as well as McDonald's head of security, had seen Helen Steele distributing leaflets outside a McDonald's head office in Finchley at a demonstration in October 1989. But Nicholson also hired two firms of inquiry agents to infiltrate London Greenpeace. And McDonald's relied upon the evidence of four agents from these firms to establish that Helen Steele and Dave Morris were among the key members responsible for the publication and distribution of the leaflet at the centre of the trial. Brian Bishop had infiltrated London Greenpeace, pretending to be interested in environmental issues, and attended many of the group's weekly meetings. Mr Rampton asked Mr Bishop about a meeting that took place on August the 9th, 1990. Uh, you say, I arrived at 19.30, or as we say in English, 7.30 p.m. Present were Jonathan, Jane, Alan from Catford, Charlie and Mark. Unknown to Brian Bishop, Alan from Catford was in fact Alan Clare, one of the other investigators. And Clare, of course, had no idea that Bishop was also an undercover agent. So of the six people present at the meeting, four were London Greenpeace regulars and two were undercover agents. Then you say... This meeting lacked the direction of last week, probably due to the absence of the leading members of the group. I had the impression that no one present wished to be definitive, because whatever they said would be overruled by the non-existent hierarchy if the latter disagreed. Then there's what I take to be a comment of your own. So much for anarchy. <laughs> yes, it was. Can I ask you, at this stage, 9th of August, 1990, can you remember who you perceive to be the leading members of the group, or as you ironically put it, the non-existent hierarchy? Paul Gravitt, Dave Morris and Helen Steele. In your statement, you talk about Mr Morris, myself and Paul Gravitt being the most vociferous. That wasn't in your notes. Do you know where that came from? That would have been my general impression of the whole group. But we're talking about three years later because it wasn't in your notes. And it wasn't until three years later that you made your statement. Yes, I agree. So what was the impression from? My impression from, in that case, my memories at the time of the occasion. Alan Steele also cross-examined a third private detective, Alan Pocklington, about his account of the role that she and Dave Morris played at London Greenpeace meetings. You've made a reference in your witness statement to it being clear from the meeting of November the 16th, 1989, that myself and Mr. Morris were core members. But that wasn't in your original notes of the meeting. And, in fact, Mr. Morris wasn't even there. So it couldn't have been clear to you during this meeting. It says during the course of this and other meetings. Yeah, and this. I.e. it was clear during this meeting and other meetings. Well, that's not, that's not the way I read it. It doesn't say that. It says during the course of this and other meetings. The agents gave evidence for two weeks, and the court heard how one of them broke into the London Greenpeace offices to take photographs. How letters were, as another agent described it, purloined to provide evidence. How a third agent, known only as Shelley, who didn't give evidence at the trial, had begun a relationship with one of the group members. And how other members were followed home after meetings to find their home addresses for the delivery of the writs for this action. 
Because in September 1990, Morris and Steele weren't the only ones to be handed writs for libel. Five members of London Greenpeace were originally sued by McDonald's, but three of them backed down and apologised in court and withdrew all the allegations made in the leaflet. One of those named in the writ who apologised was the next witness to give evidence on behalf of the defendants, Paul Gravett. Helen Steele read his statement into court and asked him to confirm his account of the demonstration in October 1989 when both Sid Nicholson and McDonald's head of security claimed to have seen her handing out leaflets. You say, I was on the picket at McDonald's headquarters on 16th of October 1989 and I do not think any fact sheets were taken or handed out on that day. Also, I don't remember Helen handing out any leaflets at all. Yeah. Alan Steele then asked Paul Gravett about the private investigator's note of the meeting on January the 18th, 1990. She admitted to helping with all anti-McDonald's information leaflets and their distribution. Have you ever heard me say anything like that? No. I mean, you didn't... Helen didn't start coming to London Greenpeace regularly until 1988. Well, that was nearly two years after the fact sheet was published, so there's no way you'd have said that. No. He's made that up. Dave Morris asked Paul Gravett about the private investigator's notes of the London Greenpeace meeting of March the 1st. On the top half of the page it says, helped organise the 1989 McDonald's Fair. Have you got any comments on that? Oh, that's complete rubbish. You didn't. Cos I know. Cos I did. And helped produce the leaflets for the anti-McDonald's campaign. Great involvement. Completely wrong. You weren't greatly involved. You weren't involved at all, in fact. Then the last thing I want to look at is the 20th of September 1990, Brian Bishop, I think, about people organising a picket of Kentucky Fried Chicken on Seven Sisters Road, and Dave Morris stated he was getting too old for that kind of thing. Well, you were the elder statesman of the group. Yes, this is the last question. Mr Gravitt, you got a writ from McDonald's. You were one of the people who originally got a writ from McDonald's. And in 1991, an apology was entered on your behalf for the criticisms made in the London Greenpeace fact sheet. Yeah. Why did you make that apology? I made the apology because at the time we were given advice that we could not get legal aid. And without barristers, it was unthinkable to fight a libel case on our own. If we lost the case, we'd be bankrupted. Well, that's what we were told, so that's why I apologised. I didn't apologise because I thought the leaflet was lies. And what was your view about the leaflet at the time? Well, my view of the leaflet was, as it is now, that I'd stand by it, you know? I think it's accurate. During cross-examination, Mr Rampton asked about the role that Dave Morris played in London Greenpeace. Dave Morris was already a member by the time you joined. Well, it was part of the group when I joined, yeah. But as I became a more regular attender, I noticed his attendance got less. That was from 87 onwards. You described him this morning as some kind of elder statesman, didn't you? Off-the-cuff witticism. Mr Gravett, off-the-cuff is sometimes more reliable than under the sleeve. Elder statesman's quite a good description, isn't it? Dave used to come along to the meetings and talk about the history of the group and what he'd done in the past. I've never denied that McDonald's was one of the campaigns of London Greenpeace, but, you know, it was one of the campaigns. And certain individuals took part in it and others didn't. And Miss Steele and Mr Morris didn't. No, Mr Gravett. No. Am I to... Uh, <coughs> am I to understand that answer? You're saying that Miss Steele and Mr Morris didn't take part in the anti-McDonald's campaign. Or have I misunderstood you? Well, by any part, they were not, as I can remember, involved in organising. I mean, Dave was only coming to meetings, rarely. Now, Helen did take part in the anti-McDonald's campaign in 1989, so if you want to say include that as part of the campaign, yeah. But, I mean, no way was this a group effort. My involvement in it was on a totally different level to anyone else's in the group. I was the anti-McDonald's campaign. How many people attended the picket on the 16th of October, 1989? Don't remember accurately. 25? Something like that. So you weren't on your own, were you? No. 
And when the final witness for the defendants, Jane Laporte, gave evidence, Mr. Rampton asked some personal questions about Helen Steele, which would set the stage for his later cross-examination of her in the witness box. Do you agree with me that you will often get in a temper when she's at the losing end of a decision or an argument? I can't actually recall if I've ever seen Helen in a temper. Not with me. You know, I don't think I've seen her in a temper as it were with anyone else. Do you agree with me that she has a somewhat sharp tongue in a way of putting people down? No. You don't? No. You do not then agree that she is a forceful and somewhat intimidating character? No. I don't find her intimidating. Mr. Rampton had now made it clear in court how he regarded his opponent, Helen Steele. When we return, the shootout between the barrister and the barmaid, and Mr. Big Mac faces his final grilling. Oh.